Microtik OSPF over IP IP tunnel. So before we continue in our video demonstration, so just to point out that this video tutorial is just to answer some what if questions. For example, what if I would like to run OSPF over an IP IP tunnel. This is just for educational or learning purposes only and may not happen in real or production networks. So typically OSPF being an interior gateway protocol or routing protocol, you would want it to run on your local area network or extended local area network. And not like in this topology that we are running OSPF over IP IP tunnel and of course IP IP tunnel is over the internet. Again, this is just plainly a testing exercise and would like just to test whether we could run some routing protocols over another protocol. So in this case, we would like to run OSPF over an IP IP tunnel. So here in our site one router, let's just recap on what was built in this. So we have interface IP IP tunnel. So we have our running IP IP tunnel towards 200, 200, 202 with an IPsec secret. And as such, we have an IP address for this tunnel. So 172.16.1.1. So the other side will be 172.16.1.2. Then we could confirm reachability to the other side of the IP IP tunnel by doing a ping towards the other IP IP tunnel interface IP address. So that will be ping 172.16.1.2. And yes, there is a reply from that tunnel IP address. So we also configure static routing as such that PCs on site number 1 will be able to reach PCs on site number 2 via the IP IP tunnel. So here in our site 1 router, we could confirm the creation of the static route that will be on IP routes and let's maximize this for clarity so you have anything that is going to 192.168.200.0 slash 24 or the other side which is site number two please go to the tunnel ip address on the other side that will be 172.16.1.2 so to confirm the static routing functionality is working so we have two clients sample clients from our site one for site one and one for site two with their corresponding obtained ip addresses so we have for pc on site one 192.168.100.254 we have our PC from site number 2, 192.168.200.254. So let's do a ping to confirm reachability. So ping 192.168.200.254 and continuous ping. And yes, there is reachability from PC on site 1 to PC on site number 2. We can also perform some trace command, which is to print the path the packets take towards that particular destination network so for this sample pc or virtual simulator pc so the command will be trace it will be different of course when you use your actual windows or linux machines so trace towards the same destination 200.254 and as you can see from my gateway so my pc goes to my gateway it then go to the tunnel ip address and reach the particular site to pc so our objective is to make use of open shortest path first dynamic routing protocol so back in our site one router if we go to ip routes there is this static route and because we have made some hard work for this, uh, we could just disable this or don't remove or change the AD or administrative distance to ad 
number that is higher than the OSPF default distance so that is 110 so we will edit this and configure with a higher distance than the default OSPF distance so from a distance of 1 which is the default distance for static routes we will make it a higher so higher meaning let's say 111 or even 125 if you want so for the purposes of this example so let's just make it as plus 1 higher than the default OSPF distance. So click apply, click OK. So although we have changed this to this particular distance, this will still be the route that will be used by our router until such time that there is a better specific route or more specific route or a route that has a lower distance towards this destination and that is after we have configured OSPF so let's just do some basic OSPF configuration so take note we are on site 1 and it's using router OS version 7 so we go to routing router ID first and we will add some router ID for this router so for router ID, you would have preferred the IP address of the loopback interface. So a quick check if we have a loopback interface we don't have. So we, let's just quickly add. So open a bridge or create a bridge. Name it as whatever name. For example, this is loopback and IP address and assign an IP address for that loopback interface. So that will be, for example, another IP address 172.31.255.1 for this loopback interface then we can go back to our ospf configuration so windows router id so windows keeps the windows open so for example let's add the router id so i'll just name it router dash id for clarity and that will be 172 31 255.1 you can even click only loop back for example on this scenario so click apply click ok now that we have router id for our site one router we can go to routing ospf and configure an instance so there is no default instance for this ospf so click plus sign let us just leave the instance ip as it is version 2 vrf is main router id will change it to router dash id will redistribute connected and the rest we will not configure for now so click apply click ok next we will configure areas so for simplicity we'll just configure our topology with a single area so that is the backbone area so click plus sign let's just rename this name for clarity so let's just term it as backbone with the area id we are not configuring types for now so let's just accept the others so click apply click ok so before we continue further let's go back to our topology so we are on site one so we are not expecting ospf traffic on ether one we are also not expecting ospf traffic on our ether three so ether one and ether three will become passive interfaces and then we are just forming ospf neighbor adjacency to our IP IP tunnel interface so only this interface we will configure it on our OSPF interface so going back so we'll go to interface templates so not interfaces because we cannot add here only on interface templates we click plus sign so let's settle first the ether1 and ether3 which we will configure it as passive interface so click apply click OK and then we'll have the IP IP tunnel interface. So click plus sign. So interface site to site or site IP IP tunnel on the single area that is backbone on the following networks 172 16.1.0 slash 30. So network type, uh, let's just do PTP and let's just leave all for defaults so click apply click ok okay so we have interface templates the instances the areas that we have created so under here on interfaces so we have an expectation that we will form neighbor relationships via the ip ip tunnel 
and on this interface it's passive but for now we don't have any neighbors because site 2 is not configured yet so here in our site 2 so without further delay let's quickly configure so let's go to bridge and create the same loopback interface next will be ip address for that particular bridge so 172.31.255.2 on that loopback interface apply ok so we'll close the bridge and we'll close the ip address next will be routing router id so plus sign so name it as router dash id our id is 172.31.255.2 only on the loopback click apply click ok so for our micro tick on site number two it will still be the same so ether one will still be passive ether three will still be passive and we are forming relationships on our ospf on the ip ip tunnel interface so we close this router id window let's go to routing ospf instances so let's create an instance with the following router id we distribute connected click apply click ok next let's go to areas plus sign the same name for description sake backbone so the same instance the same area id we are not doing types for now so click apply click ok and we go to interface templates plus sign so we settle first the passive interfaces ether1 and ether3 passive click ok and then you have your tunnel interface so plus sign so our site ip ip tunnel on the area with the networks 172 1.0 slash 30 so network type will be ptp so all configuration remains default click apply click ok so let's just verify the interfaces so we have the passive and the ptp interface and you go to neighbors and yes indeed we have formed neighbor relationship with our site one router 172.16.1.1 and if you go to lsa link state advertisements so you will notice that you will get the network 192.168.100.0 so coming from the loopback ip which is the router id of site one so meaning to say we are from this network 192.168.200 network our neighbor inform us or advertise this particular subnet to us 192.168.100.0 and if you take a closer look so if you double click that so you'll see this is the id and you have the mass for that so 255.255.255.0 or slash 24 and if you confirm on the main routing table on site number two so we go to ip routes so you will notice that our ospf route going to that destination 192.168.100.0 as a blue color and there is no active flag because for site number two we haven't changed the distance of our static route so the prefix length is the same slash 24 so tied and the static route has a lower distance with our ospf being 110 so our static route wins so what we can do is just simply make it a higher distance let's proceed to edit this so on the route so we just edit it to the same as our site one with a 111 distance so click apply click ok and you'll notice that our ospf route has an active flag already so for site one you should have ospf routes as well so as you can see we now have dynamic active ospf so we have this as our requirement that is in order to go to site number two and finally in our pc for site one and site two so on site one let's just do a quick verification if we are still able to reach the other site pc so that will be 254 that will be site number two pc ip address and yes 
we are still able to reach 